Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about the best way to optimise your photographs for the web. I'm not talking social media here, I'm talking about your own website for instance, because social media sites really compress your images right down. They don't want large images. It is important because we need fast downloading. The other reason it's important as well is Google on their search pages prefer sites to be faster loading. So all things being equal, the faster site always wins and 50% of the data on most web pages or websites is images. And images don't really convey a lot sometimes, they're just eye candy. So for a photographer like me, dealing with eye candy really, I need to make my images the smallest possible file size. The other factor is pixel dimensions. I've done videos on this before and I've covered it on my website. Generally, all things being equal, the larger pixel dimensions lead to larger file sizes. So always take that into account as well. Now I'm going to export this one image 14 times and I'll show you what I mean. I'm using a plugin from a guy called Jeffrey Friedel. There will be a link down below. And basically, Long Edge 1920 because that's the size I use for my hero images on my front page. Sharpening medium, it's not that important. And everything else, well, it will do its job and put it in Finder for me. I'm on a Mac, that will be Explorer on Windows. I've done this already, so over to Finder. Now here's the images. 93 to 100, 85 to 92. Why is that? The reason being is when you really save a JPEG, and here's Photoshop, it's in fact 0 to 12 cancel but also when you go file export as it's zero to 100 in Lightroom it's exactly the same but they're really weighting it against zero to 12 so when you come to export really from Lightroom and export as from Photoshop it's ranges so if you dropped your image from let's say 84 to 80 you're not really making a saving because the range is 77 to 84 now here's the zero to seven quality one, pretty awful. Around 39 to 46 usually works for me and that's fine. I think the one below it, 31 to 38, it's got too much banding in the sky. So 319, although my system says 327, let's be kind, go for 319. And what I'm trying to do is trying to beat that figure and get it smaller because Adobe don't really use very aggressive compression methods. So you always have to have this second step. And it is annoying, but you need to do it for the web. You definitely do. So I'm going to use some online image compressors to try and beat that image there. Tiny amount of banding, but let's see if we can beat it in file size. So over to the web. Squoosh is from Google, and it can create WebP format. Now WebP will overtake JPEG and PNG going forward. It's being developed by Google, Apple with Safari will not support it in the web browser. So as far as we're concerned, September 2020, it's JPEGs for our images, unless we're web developers and know what we're doing. Now, in WordPress, there's ways of serving up WebP where they can convert JPEG to WebP on the fly. And I use an image optimizing plugin called E. WWWIO. I will have a link down below. And that does a lot of things for me in the background. But this video is not about that. This is for everyone, basically whatever platform they're on, because you're using an online web service to compress your files. Now, I will tell you that Squoosh is the best, but it can be very complicated when you go into the advanced settings. But let's just show it to you first. So I'm going to have to work with the top quality 93 to 100 one, which has had little, or well, actually, I believe no compression done it at all. And it's 1.7 megabytes. That's quite large. So when you open it in Squoosh, there will be a link down below, obviously. Bottom left is its size there, 1.72 megabytes. Left hand side, pre-compression. Right hand side, after compression. Bottom right, 260 kilobytes, 85% smaller. We're using Moz JPEG. Now, if I tick show advanced settings, it looks really complicated. I'll tell you what happens when you convert or compress with JPEG compression. And it's not a file format, it's a form of compression. It converts the image to YCBCR. That's the color space. And then it runs discrete cosine transforms or Fourier transforms on that information. Then it further encodes the image. Now, the reason it converts to YCBCR is it can separate out the 
chromaticity, which is the color, from the luminance or luma. The human eye is very sensitive to changes in luminance, but less so in color. Also in high frequency areas like the face of that rock, you can get away with removing a lot of the data because it's kind of noisy if you see what I mean. We see it as a rock, but the computer doesn't see it like that. There's great changes over adjoining pixels, so it's quite noisy if you see what I mean, and you can get away with removing a lot of that data. And the discrete cosine transforms do that for you. Now, all you see is a quality slider normally, but that is taking place. So every uh, software vendor has different ways of compressing JPEGs. There's no one way. The 80 in Photoshop probably doesn't match the 80 in Lightroom. It's just the way it works. So if you know what you're doing, you can get away with a lot from separating out chroma quality, which is the color, and dropping it down till you start to see blotchiness. But that's very advanced stuff. And for us, we don't need it at this particular video. I'm just saying all I'm going to do is play around with the quality. And don't forget, I was competing with the 39 to 46 one, which is, me being kind, is 319. And I've got it to 260. So that's quite a big drop. Now, I haven't touched the quality slider. Now, what the quality slider is doing here, whether it's moving more chromacity or color than it is high frequency detail, I don't know. And that's the trouble with JPEG compression. You're relying on the vendor to drop the quality for you. So 66, tiny amount of banding in the sky. I might bring it up a little bit. 68, 69. Let it catch up, of course. I can get away with 70. I really can, honestly. And that's 86% smaller at 234. So let's go for 234 kilobytes. That's very, very good. Now, the other online ones... And I've read a lot of websites about the best 10 compressors and this and that and the other. And quite frankly, none are as good as Squish. But I show you Tiny PNG. Let's get that file, the 93 to 100 one. Open it up. Let it do its job. I'm going to download it to show it to you. It's 276.9. Uh, you've got no control there. Download all. I'll put it into downloads. Save it. And there's the image. It zipped it up for some unknown reason. Command I. It is, in fact, just double checking 279, which it, it said it would be. And it's not fantastic. It's still a bit of banding in the sky, but not bad. The next one I'm going to try is Kraken IO. I'm, I'm going to show you why I don't like it anymore. I used to like it. I'm going to use Lossy. Now, Lossy takes away more da data. Lossless will not affect quality. 93 to 100. Let it upload. Now straight away, it says file size too large, upgrade to Pro, and get 32 megabytes maximum file size. So Kraken IO, I'm sorry, I'm not going to use it again. It was quite good, but if it can't cope with 1.7 megabytes and won't let you do that, I'm not going to use it. Next one, JPEG optimizer. Right, I don't want to resize it. Choose file, 65. So you've got no feedback here. I'm going to have to go for it. So 93 to 101. Open. Optimize. There's the image. And what size is it? Lots of adverts. Well, I'll put up with that. 272, as a matter of fact. Not bad compared to the squoosh one. I'll download that one as well, as a matter of fact. Put it in downloads. I'll call that one Squoosh so there's no confusion about the name. Um, there's a little bit of banding in that one. Not about the same as the other one, actually. 234. I'm just proving it's a 234. JPEG optimizer, not too bad. But you can see you can't get feedback when you're actually moving that quality slider. So it's a lot of work there. So Squoosh is still scoring. Kraken, obviously, don't, I'm not going to use it again. So this one is ezgif.com and it's been mentioned by lots of people I'm just going to choose file 93 to 100 1 1.7 megabytes upload it let's use something like 60 which I did in the other one as I said quality is really arbitrary so let's put 60 down there and go optimize image not bad a little bit bandy in the sky 243 it's still really Squish and Squish gives you the feedback. That's why Squish is by far and away the best. The trouble is there is some bugs in it, and I know a little bit about JPEG. And when I was playing around with this, I realised that 
things weren't coming out exactly right. Things were getting larger when they should have got smaller. Honestly, untick that. It's fine. Eventually, everything will be WebP. And as you can see, WebP is working now and it's 220 straight away and I've not even played around with effort or quality. So it's lossy is the best to really get the file size down. Squoosh is the best. That's it, guys. Thanks very much.